Senator Barefoot. Uh, maybe this question is for Lou. You may have mentioned this. Under the timeline and potential stakeholder groups, who are the stakeholder groups? Uh, in, in the handout that's entitled Timeline and Potential Stakeholder Groups, on the second of the two pages, there is a, a list of organizations um, that we had involved over a year ago when we put together the uh, State Board's uh, equity plan. And it's the, the, the usual folks you would anticipate, School Boards Association, Association of School Administrators, um, personnel administrators, university system, community college system, uh, association of educators, uh, some of the comprehensive centers that we have that uh, we're allowed to use, teacher groups, parent groups. Dr. Atkinson has numerous advisory committees already established in place. Um, obviously, and it's in the timeline, we anticipate coming back uh, to Ed Oversight or other legislative committees to let you know what we've been gathering, where we are with uh, the plan, and, and seek guidance from the General Assembly. Uh, we welcome your feedback as to groups that may not be required to be a part of the public input process. We also welcome the opportunity to be in your communities to uh, get that feedback. As I said before, we want to have lots of dialogue before we get our final plan so that we, as a state, can have a general idea of where uh, the state wants us to go as far as the use of ESSA dollars. Follow-up, Senator Bresson. Just one quick follow-up. So is this considered a stakeholder meeting and part of your timeline? Yes. So you guys would consider this the General Assembly's time to weigh in on all this? Uh, not, a, not at all, Senator Barefoot, but it was more a first step in uh, providing information to JLEOC on what the new ESSA is. Um, again, as Dr. Atkinson said, we, we encourage any questions, comments, suggestions, because as part of our plan, this is something the U.S. Department of Education typically requires, we have to list all of the different times that we've gone out and talked with groups, where we did it, who was there, and that kind of thing. So yes, uh, this meeting will be part of that list that we'll be providing to the U.S. Department of Ed. Follow up. Just one comment. I mean, I would just like to say for the members in this room, you know, this process is moving pretty quickly, and whether you are aware or not, this is your oper one of your opportunities. Maybe there'll be more. Um, but if, if you don't like the outcome, what will happen at the end of this process is they'll turn around and say, hey, we came to you on whatever today's date is. And, uh, you know, this was the feedback you gave to us. And so I just want all my constituents or colleagues to have their eyes wide open to that. Dr. Atkinson. Yeah. Uh, please, as I have said before, we welcome your feedback. We want you to be a part of this process. If you need additional meetings where you want to have um, in-depth conversation, we, are, we will be glad to provide that for you. What we see today is a first step in just giving you an overview and identifying the areas for which uh, we know that there is uh, differences between state and federal law. So uh, we will take the lead from you as to how many times, how long, and when you would like to give us feedback. Senator Tillman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, two questions. When is the implementation to begin on this Every Child Succeeds Act? Number two, when is our plan going to be finalized? Okay. When does it begin and when is our plan due? Okay, uh, in the handout, the timeline indicates that the uh, plan, at this point in time, we do not know when the U.S. Department of Education will tell us we can submit the plan. We don't anticipate knowing that until the federal regulations get issued. But the implementation of whatever plan we submit will not be until the 17-18 school year. So July 1 of 2017, is the date when we will start implementing whatever the new plan is. 
The U.S. Department of Education will have up to four months to review a state's plan. So it's possible, we were ambitious in how we put our plan together, thinking we could potentially have it ready by December of 2016, this coming December, a little less than a year from now. Uh, it could be that it's going to be January or February before we'll be in a position to put that, final, that plan finally together. Follow up, Mr. Chair. Follow up, Senator Tillman. As plans go, it may be the middle of 17 or the end of 17 before we get the plan developed fully because we're waiting on the feds to let us know a whole lot more before we can do the plan then I'm afraid we're going to lose a half year, if not a year, uh, with this delay in the plans. I know how the feds move, and, and uh, sometimes we can get bogged down, too, uh, in, in writing the plan to determine. The good thing I see about this is they're turning more back over to the states and less to the feds. I think Arne Duncan proved that that approach was not going to work, and uh, that I am thankful for. So we'll have much more control of what we end up doing than before, and that's a good thing. Uh, did you have a follow up, Dr. Atkinson? Yep. Um, we uh, also agree that it's a good thing that the state has a f um, greater flexibility, and uh, that's one of the reasons why we want input from people across North Carolina um, during this process. Representative Pittman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my question is really for the chairs. Uh, I know we have a number of citizens here today who probably would love to speak directly to this committee, and I'm understanding they're not getting a chance today. I'm wondering when will they get their chance to speak, because there are some of them who have some concerns about this. <clears throat> well, as, as you're aware, we've got a, a fairly long list of items to cover today. Uh, we certainly want to get feedback. Um, this was more of an informational meeting and obviously the members are, are, are free to you know put, put some questions forth uh, and, and so uh, and, and I think Dr. Atkinson has a comment as well and maybe I'll let her make that if it's on on your point yeah. I am sure the State Board of Education would want me to make this point no decisions have been made at all about what will be in our plan for ESSA and we welcome anyone who may want to give feedback but as, as pointed out by the chair, this is an informational meeting giving you the framework of what must be included in the plan. So their decisions have not been made, and so we welcome that input. I'll make one, one follow-up, and I know uh, it looks like Representative Pittman has a follow-up, and Representative Johnson, or Chairwoman Johnson, wanted to make a comment as well. I mean, I think one thing that might be good for us, to the extent we have anyone that wants to provide information, you, you, you know, you can pass it obviously straight on but we're, the chairs are, are, are glad to get it as well and 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 on some issues obviously we'll need we, we can use have the benefit of staff helping us confirm or make clear you know I mean some of the, some of the issues out there are just questions right that people are trying to make sure they understand what the law is and is not and so we, we certainly want to get that information and make sure um, input is taken and questions are answered to the extent there are some uh, let me let representative chairwoman Johnson make a comment uh, I just wanted to uh, make this comment that might answer some of those questions. Uh, this session is short session, so we will only be in session hopefully six weeks, maybe a little longer. But we will continue um, joint education oversight after short session, so there is plenty of time to revisit. Um, this issue and to uh, devote a meeting just to that issue right now we just wanted to see sort of where we were between what we read at the federal level and what we actually have that is applicable through the um, state level sort of to give us an idea so that we can find out what questions we need to answer if that answers your question uh, representative Pittman so, I do have a question though mr. Yeah. chair <laughs> uh, chairwoman Johnson um, there's one area that um, I find that we usually have problems with, and that is um, our private and our home school. Um, 
do we sort of fit in that or are we going to have to do work there? Do you, you know, as you said, some of our programs will fit right in. Uh, how do you feel? I mean, I know you do not know, but how do you feel that would uh, fit in? Um, I'll start uh, and then I'll let Dr. Fabrizio continue. There is a provision in this law about services uh, being offered to children who attend private schools. And that has been a part of the legislation for uh, uh, <laughs> since the last time. And we will have to develop that information also as a part of the plan. Yeah. Uh, Representative Pittman, did you have another follow-up? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we're talking about uh, returning decisions to the states. And I'm wondering, you know, in spite of the uh, disappointing uh, performance uh, in the end of the ASRC and their recommendations, um, there still might be a chance, and I'll be working on it, to get rid of Common Core. So if we get rid of Common Core and so much of the testing stuff being tied to it, how does that affect state making decisions? Uh, first of all, as a part of the State Board of Education's carrying out general statutes of the General Assembly about how we go about revising standards, uh, the, we are on that road today. We are in the fourth year of using standards and we are getting feedback uh, from and have gotten feedback from our teachers, from our university, from our community college people. And we will, present it, we will be presenting to the State Board of Education a plan for the revision of standards. Uh, we also know that it was No Child Left Behind in the General Assembly who uh, have requirements for testing. So it is imperative that any time you have testing that what you test is what is required of students to know and be able to do. As a part of our process, uh, we are reviewing standards from other states. We have comparisons of the differences and the similarities from states. Uh, we know that when you change a standard then that also requires changing tests. Uh, that also requires changing textbooks. That also requires a massive undertaking of doing professional development for at least 50,000 teachers in our state. So uh, the State Board is aware of all of the complexity of changing standards. And your legislation says that when we change standards, we must do the following. They must be measurable, they must be rigorous, they must be aligned with what students should know and be able to do in order to be successful at the community college level and at the university level and at uh, the workplace. It also requires that wherever possible that our standards are aligned with the National Assessment of Educational Progress. Another component is that the State Board of Education, according to your law, requires that we be transparent, we share the information with uh, people across the state, that we have committees who would give us feedback, and that we would use data in making the decisions. So in short, the State Board of Education continues on its plan to review, uh, given all the feedback, and to have a timeline for revision of the standards. Uh, there has never been a perfect standard. There never will be a perfect standard. And we know as the Department of Public Instruction that there are places where we can uh, have greater clarification, where we can have greater alignment, and where uh, we can revise the standards. Now, uh, my big question is, the General Assembly, for example, tells us how to teach reading. Uh, in the General Assembly legislation, it tells us that we must teach phonemic awareness, phonics, comprehension, fluency, and vocabulary. The standards adopted for reading in our state follow those five, those five areas. So I'm just using that as an example of how in the adoption of the standards, we have honored and valued the legislation of the General Assembly in teaching reading by using those five areas. 
<clears throat> we have uh, just a few minutes left on, on this, and I've got a number of folks to, to go through, so please uh, keep that in mind in, in, in Q&A here. Senator Pate. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning uh, to all of you. Uh, we have several national organizations that um, try to stay up with uh, national events as they uh, become incumbent upon state legislatures and state government to pick up the the uh, pieces that the Congress throws our way and um, such organizations as the uh, NCSL ALEC the CSL or CSG I guess it is and SREB sorry to throw out all those acronyms but these are all recognizable organizations and I just wonder uh, what their takes might be on this legislation and where the states uh, would start and, and what it would be a good path for us to follow if they have any uh, thoughts along those lines. Representative Atkinson, Jimmy, comment? As, um, as a part of our process, we review any national organization's uh, material, uh, including uh, the ones that you have just mentioned to my knowledge. And Dr. Fabrizio may know differently, those organizations have not developed a briefing or a position paper, but we always, we don't want to reinvent that which someone else has already done. So we look wherever we can to get feedback about what states are doing and what are nuances that we need to consider. Senator Waddell. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for this report. I have two questions, and one of the questions concern um, what you talk about on page three, when you talk about the federal requirements, and then you said that you had over a three-year period, schools you'd get, but it does not say, and I think school systems need to know what happens after that. I, some of them will be, I think you said would be continuously involved and given support, but you also said that you'd get three additional schools for support. So wh what happens? You got to have the requirements here, but you don't say after that, then what? Um, th that is a decision yet to be made um, about what would happen after a school has been in uh, three years of support. Uh, we also, that's also an area where we need to work with the General Assembly to see if we can have some congruence in what uh, we would be required to do. And we have flexibility as a state to make those decisions and those decisions have not been made yet. Okay. The follow-up? Fo follow-up. Okay. The other thing you talked about, the um, ESSEA, and as compared to No Child Left Behind, and that currently you're still following No Child Left Behind until the 17, 18 school year. What about the dollars and what's the difference in the amount of funds that will be generated for this program? Uh, you recognize. Uh, we anticipate that the funding will be about the same uh, from that which we receive from No Child Left Behind to that which we will receive through ESSA. There may be some additional dollars for professional development for our teachers and e other educators, but we anticipate it's about the same. Is that a dollar Congress amount? Acts. Is that a number that goes with that? A million, two million, what is it? Oh, it's, uh, uh, I believe that uh, we will need to get you those figures. I'm afraid to um, answer that question. Dr. Brown, uh, do you have the, may I call on her? Yeah, yes, Dr. Brown, if you have, can answer Senator Waddell's question, we'd love to have you. Donna Brown uh, with the Department of Public Instruction, Division of Federal Program Monitoring and Support. Um, the largest grant that North Carolina receives under the current legislation 
is Title I Part A, and that's approximately $464 million a year. Okay, thank you. Um, maybe I'll ask a, f a follow up r relatedly. I know we used to have school improvement grant funding, and as I understand it, that is no longer in this. Are there dollars specifically allocated for turnarounds, achievement school districts, and the like? The, uh, you're correct. The SIG grant money has been eliminated, but in the legislation, it allows states to now use up to 7 percent of the Title I funds for providing support to the schools. So that's why we keep saying that the money amounts are about the same, but it'll some of that stuff has been shifted around with the uh, the way the new legislation is written. I think I've got Representative Jones and Representative McNeil and uh, and Senator Tillman, and I may have to cut it after that. So uh, Representative Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dr. Atkinson, Mr. Fabrizio, for being here today for your presentation. I, I think I have three questions, and they're all pretty brief ones. I want to go back to your comments about the Every Student Succeeds Act um, that you spoke about earlier. Um, I guess my first question is just a clarification, Dr. Atkinson. You, you s used the word standard several times, kind of generically, and you said that for the past four years, you know, the state has been on these standards. I just w for the clarification of the people listening, not only here, y you are referring, of course, to the Common Core standards. Is that is that fair to say? You never spoke about Common Core in particular, but can you just specify? Yeah, the I am referring to the standard course of study as required by the General Assembly. And that standard course of study includes mathematics, English language arts, social studies, healthful living, uh, world languages, <laughs> career technical education. So when I use the phrase standards, I'm talking about the entire standard course of study, including all of our dis disciplines, grade by grade, course by course. And at, at, the, at now, our, our first priority is to look at the standards which some would refer to as the common core standards in uh, English language arts reading and mathematics. Also when I refer to standards I am talking about what students should know and be able to do. Statements of what students should know and be able to do. I'm not talking about curriculum, about the how of implementing those standards. I'm just talking about statements such as the General Assembly statement that all children at the third grade should know their multiplication tables by memorization. I'm also referring to the General Assembly's requirement that we teach cursive writing. I'm referring to our students knowing uh, how to use fractions, decimals, how to add, multiply, subtract, and divide. They are the statements that I'm talking about. So that would include the Common Core Standards? That's correct. That, okay, thank you. Um, how aware is the department, I guess, regarding some of the concerns with this legislation? I know we don't have time to hear from all the people that are, that are here today. I just, I'm looking at a, at a handout, and we got a pretty thorough handout from one group that's here today, and it just, briefly, it says it heavily incentivizes states to maintain the Common Core state standards. It says, as a requirement of the act, states must demonstrate to the secretary that they have adopted standards that are aligned to the same definition of college and career standards used to force states into adopting Common Core under NCLB waivers. And, and I, I would assume that you're aware of the concerns that I think we have all heard in, in large numbers in droves uh, from parents and teachers across this state uh, regarding particularly the Common Core standards. And that I think there is an ongoing concern that there is a there's an effort, uh, perhaps starting at the federal level, uh, to kind of rebrand this or to continue it. But uh, one of the concerns, obviously, here is that this legislation incentivizes states to maintain these type standards, whether they're rebranded or not. Are you aware of that concern? Are you sympathetic yes. to that concern? Can you address that? Yes. Uh, with all due respect for the person giving that feedback, there is no incentive in this legislation. Uh, in fact, it makes it emphatic that the federal government cannot dictate to states what standards are adopted. It, it establishes, as state law does today, it establishes the state to be in charge of developing the standards. Your legislation says that our high school courses must be aligned 
with that which is necessary for students to be successful in college, community colleges and universities, would it not be a travesty that we had our students stay 12 years or 13 years in high school and then they not be ready to go to our community colleges that we would have misalignment? Would it not be a travesty that we have our students graduating from our public schools and not be able to pass freshman courses? So your legislation many years ago said you have to align your standards with what is required at the university system and at the community college level. I am sure that there will be people across North Carolina who will say that that is a camouflage for the federal government to incentivize us. We get the same amount of money because it's based on formula regardless of the standards that this state has in place. Mr. Chairman, final question, and I'll, again, short. But with uh, Representative Johnson's question, and you, you spoke to that, and you mentioned that these standards, according to the legislation, would be offered, I think the word you used was offered to private schools. Uh, is there any that you're aware of, is there any compulsory element of that when it comes to, to private schools? Is there any, any compulsory effort, or is it simply offered, it's out there, they can choose to use it, or they can choose to not, or yeah. how, how would you? Uh, Representative Jones, the standards are not what I'm talking about when it comes to private schools. What the legislation allows, as it has in the past, is for a student who is in a private school to be able to take advantage of a course that would be offered in a public school for which federal dollars are being used to support that course. I'll give you an example. Uh, we have private school students who may want to go to a, a public high school to take um, digital media. And so if that is supported by federal dollars, then that is to be made available to the student who would go to a private school. So they are not connected. Thank you for that clarification. Thank you. Uh, last question is gonna be <coughs> Representative McNeil's. If you have follow-ups and I did not get to you, please feel free to uh, submit them through us and we'll make sure we get the answers. Representative McNeil. Uh, to your right over here. I'm over here by myself in the amen corner. <laughs> All right. My question is fairly simple, and it's for you, and it's also maybe for the, the chairs. I, I noticed in your timeline, and going back to your timeline, you have September, October to present to the Joint Legislative Education Oversight Committee your progress to date. So it does look like you have a plan to come back to us at some point. But I'm concerned that that, that apparently is before you present your plan to the SBE before the 30 days governor's review, before you submit the plan to USCD. And that's good because it gives us a chance to weigh in. But my question is this, at that point when you come back to us, what, are, what, do you, what is your goal to have to present to us? Are you gonna have some kind of a draft plan uh, to, to show us something that we can weigh in on? Or are you just gonna stand up there and say, well, this is where we're at? Uh, you know, I, I like to know that at, at when we get that far down the road, we've got, something in our hand to look at. Uh, it is our goal to do that, which you described, uh, Representative McNeil, to have a plan in hand. We would also want to uh, have that plan to you uh, ahead of time as much as we can so that you can review, digest, reflect, and then offer recommendations to us about change. We also know that in some cases it may require some if the General Assembly sees fit, it may require some change in legislation. All right, thank you both for being here. And again, if you have further questions, please uh, <clears throat> direct them and we will uh, get some follow-up.